If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. This original bedtime story is made possible thanks to Slumberland patrons. If you would like to support this channel, you can find Patreon details in the description and on my channel homepage. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I'm just going to tell this sleep story in the background. And I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sound of my voice or to the spaces between my words. And as you begin to comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell the story of a boy called Gareth. And Gareth awakens to find himself in a strange house. And as Gareth awakens in this house, he looks around the room. He stands up. And while he's looking around, this house is very dark. All he can see in every direction is black. And when he takes a step on the floor, the strangest thing happens. That the floor begins to move and rise and he starts to walk to try and get out of this house. And as he walks, so the floor gets steeper and steeper until it's so steep that he starts to slide back down again. And as he slides, so that floor lowers down. So that he stops around the centre of the floor where he started. And so he tries to walk the other way. But as he walks, so the floor seems to get steeper and steeper. until eventually the floor is so steep he slides back down again. And it doesn't matter how many times he tries to walk left or tries to walk right. As he walks, so the floor just gets steeper and steeper and he falls back down to the middle where he started. And after some time, he decides that it seems too difficult to escape from here. He doesn't even really know where here is or how he got here. He's just aware that this is where he woke. And then while he's just sat there in the middle of the room, he hears this gentle noise. And it's a gentle noise of a little bird. And this little bird, this tiny green budgie, lands on the ground in front of him. And this room seems to have the strange property that there's somehow enough glow that he can see. But the floor and walls must be absorbing all of the light because he can't physically see the walls or the floor or the ceiling. And he puts out a hand and a finger and that budgie jumps up, flutters up a little bit and lands on his finger and says, Hi, I'm Arthur. The little birdie told me that you could do with some help. You've been here for a while, trying to find a way out of this puzzle of a box. And Arthur, the budgie, tells Gareth 
that there is a way out in the same way that he found a way in. And Gareth explains that he's tried walking left, he's tried walking right, and neither route seems to find his way to a wall to be able to follow the walls to see if there's any doors or windows. And that looking around, all he can see is black around the walls. And so he can't see any way that there could be to come in or out. And Arthur says, well, was I here a moment ago? And Gareth says, well, I don't think so. I don't recall seeing you or hearing you. And Arthur says, that's because I know my way in. And we can go out the way I came in. And Gareth explains, but you're a bird. You can fly to however you came in. If I try and walk, the floor just tilts and tilts and tilts some more. And I just slide back on the floor to where I came from. And Arthur says, just follow me. And Gareth stands up and starts to follow. Arthur, as Arthur hops along the ground, but Arthur isn't heading left or right. Arthur heads in a different direction. And the floor doesn't seem to tilt that way. As Arthur hops his way over, and then hops up and seems to land in midair. And Gareth realises that Arthur is on some kind of a ledge. It's just that the walls are made with a material that's so dark that you can't see anything, that you can't make out any details or shapes. And Arthur explains that the tilting floor only pivots around a central point, left and right, up and down. And so if you can walk in a straight line, not trying to head to the wall to the left or to the wall to the right, you can find your way to a wall. And Arthur says, and here is a window. But Gareth thinks, well, if there's a window there, why does it just look like a black space, a black wall, a black nothingness? And Arthur says, that's for you to discover when we're out of here. And so Gareth follows Arthur, climbs up onto that ledge. Arthur flies out of a window that Gareth can't see. And Gareth climbs out of that window and drops down onto the ground outside this window and realises that this whole time he was in a brown building with the darkest black on the inside. But this brown building seems to be inside a larger structure. And Arthur explains that this large structure has a maze. And Arthur explains that this building is in this large structure. And Gareth looks around and starts to walk around, but in every direction, just like inside the house, all he could see was black. The only difference is that this ground wasn't tilting. And instead it seemed to have the smoothest black onyx floor. And Gareth began walking around this onyx floor. Walking around the outside of that brown house. But in every direction he looked, all he could see was black. 
and so he asked Arthur, If all I can see is black in every direction, how can I ever find a way out? It just looks like it goes on forever and ever, almost infinitely black for an infinite distance. And Arthur says, Well, I came in here, didn't I? I'm here. So there is a way out. And then Arthur flies with Gareth towards a way out. And Gareth is following along, saying, I can't see any way out. The further from the brown house we get, the blacker everything seems to be. I can't see anything. I can't see my hand in front of my face. There's just a very slight universal glow through this space, so I can just about see you when you're near my shoulder, but I can't see beyond that. And Arthur lands on Gareth's shoulder, and says, just carry on heading forward. I know my way. And after some time, Gareth finds a wall, reaches that wall, almost walks straight into it, except that he had a slight sense that something was just there. And so he reached out his hand and touched the smoothest stone wall that had a certain coolness to it. That's what he had detected, that the temperature emanating towards him had changed and he subtly detected that change and he walked along that wall holding his hand on the wall until eventually he found a corner and Arthur said this is where we go we're heading in to the Minotaur's maze And Gareth asked what the Minotaur was. And Arthur said that the Minotaur is a half-man, half-bull creature. And that the Minotaur is no longer in this maze. But many years earlier, Thousands of years ago, the Minotaur roamed this labyrinth, and the Minotaur's home was in that house, and the Minotaur would scour this cave system, scour the maze here, and would hunt down those who had been sent here but thousands of years ago. A young lady called Ariadne gave her partner Theseus a spindle of golden thread. And instead of Theseus surviving here and finding his escape, he intentionally came in here, tying that golden thread at the entrance. And he found his way all the way round to the centre, tying that golden thread on the full journey through the maze. And then tying off that golden thread here as he entered the centre of the maze. And he then hunted the Minotaur, rather than the Minotaur hunting him. And then he followed his golden thread to escape the maze, where others would be trapped within the maze, unable to find a way out in the darkness, while hunted by the Minotaur. 
and as Theseus followed that golden thread out of the maze, he left the golden thread behind. And so that's what we're going to follow now. And Arthur says, just reach down with your right hand, slide your right hand down the wall, and you'll feel the thread about waist height. And so Gareth slid his right hand down the wall until his fingertips touched that golden thread. He then put his hand around the golden thread, just loosely, and he walked along slowly, listening to the sound of his footsteps echoing through this maze. As the two of them walked around the corridors of the maze, following that golden thread, still walking in the dark, trusting the thread, trusting that that thread is weaved through the maze to the exit. Just calmly relaxed, breathing their way through the maze, giving all their focus to that thread. And after some time, Gareth said he just needs to sit down a moment and have a rest because the journey through this giant maze is so long. And a part of his mind was doubting whether he was just going around in circles or really finding his way out. And Arthur could sense this and said, you've got the strength to carry on with this. You are on the right track. This golden thread does weave to the exit. I flew in here to rescue you and I'm now joining you on your journey out. All you have to do is keep your hand on the thread and just keep following that thread. And the path may have twists and turns and challenges but it is the path to where you want to go. And you'll be successful on getting there. And after a brief break, Gareth stood up, took hold of that thread again and continued walking through this maze until eventually he could hear a change to the sound of his echoing footsteps and started to feel the slight breeze on his cheeks. And then a while after that, he noticed the slightest glimmer of silver light off in the distance. And he picked up his pace slightly as he walked towards that silver glow, and walked out into a moonlit forest, And he took some deep, comfortable breaths of the fresh air out here as he turned and looked back on where he'd come from. And it just looked like a mound in the middle of a forest with a small entrance that was unassuming that nobody probably would realise that inside there was a minotaur at one point, and inside there is an enormous maze and a strange brown house. And Gareth walked through the forest, out to a clearing where he sat down in a meadow. Arthur perched next to him, as he looked and saw the stars in the sky, the illuminated wispy clouds passing through the sky and across the moon. He could see the silver light glistening on a distant lake, hearing the rustling trees as the wind blew through the leaves, 
feeling the tickling touch of the cool grass against the palm of his hand resting beside him. And Arthur asked, how did you end up in that room? How did you end up in that house? And Gareth asked, how did you know to come and find me? And Arthur said, I was given a message. I was told that somebody needed help, that they were trapped in the Minotaur's maze, and I am the only one over recent years who's been in that maze and out again. And so I was sent because of my navigating abilities, to come and find you and help you. But I don't know why you were there. And Gareth said, well, I remember falling asleep at home. And I come from a place and a time where birds don't talk to man. And as I fell asleep, the ground started moving underfoot. And I became aware that I was in this room. And at first I thought I was just dreaming, because I had just been falling asleep. But then this whole experience happened. And it wasn't the first time I've been trapped in that room. That often, lately, when I've fallen asleep, it's as if somehow I've ended up in that room. And then when I've woken up, I'm not in that room anymore. But does that mean I'm dreaming now and I've just found an escape? And Arthur says, that's for you to discover. I've got my role in the journey and you've got yours. And Gareth explains that they've never dreamt this dream to this extent where they've got out of the room, let alone out of whatever's outside the room, and definitely not out to a meadow so beautiful as this. And Arthur says, let's head down to the lake. And they head down towards that lake. And down near the lake, a mist with sparkling light begins to form over the surface of the water, almost as if the glistening silver moonlight is turning to millions of sparkling, floating diamonds. And then an arm in the most beautiful white dress rises out of the water, holding a sword. And Arthur flies towards that sword. And as Arthur's flying, so that hand holding that sword, almost effortlessly throws the sword into the air. That sword is spinning around. And Arthur dives down towards that spinning sword. And then in a flash, Arthur falls from the sky while turning into a man and landing and rolling, and then landing on his feet. And Arthur explains that he's King Arthur of this land, and this is his sword, that the Lady of the Lake here looks after it for him, and that it's only him 
and those who are worthy, who can hold this sword or remove it from stones. And that his quest is to find the Holy Grail. But the Holy Grail isn't what people think it is. That all myths and legends are connected. And that what you think is a dream is actually you entering a different dimension psychologically and spiritually. And that as you enter that different dimension, you've been traveling back from it every night. But there was a purpose why you were appearing there. And Arthur says that they don't know what that purpose was. But it was the Lady of the Lake who had called upon them to come and help. That you've been struggling long enough and now was the time for them to support you in your journey, in your quest. And then somebody walked out of the trees with a glowing orb in their hand. And Arthur greeted them as being Merlin. And Merlin said, is this the one who needs our help? And Arthur says, yes, this is Gareth. And he was trapped in the Minotaur's maze. And I've helped him to escape the Minotaur's maze. But we don't know his purpose yet. But he keeps being sent here in his sleep, in his dreams. And so his purpose must be to be here for some reason. So we need to build him somewhere. To live here. A home in this land. Somewhere that when he sleeps and dreams, he can awaken here rather than the maze. And so Merlin waves a hand and a flash of light appears around Merlin, spreads out from Merlin, starts to glow and flicker purple and blue. And as it clears near the lake is the most beautiful cabin. And Merlin says, this cabin is created from your thoughts and dreams of where you would like to live. It has the most comfortable, relaxing bed and a meditation chair where you can sit down in that chair, drift inside and discover your purpose, your way forward and what it is you need to know about being here. And that you'll become one of the knights of the round table. You'll help on the quest to find the grail. And the holy grail isn't just a cup. But that's for you to discover. And Gareth heads into this cabin, settles down in the chair, feels instantly at home and so calm and so comfortable. And while settling down in that chair and closing his eyes for a moment to test out this meditation chair, he finds it so easy to connect with himself in bed in his normal reality and realises that now this is where he will explore things 
not in the Minotaur's maze. And that he knows his way in and out of the Minotaur's maze now, if he ever does go back there. But he doesn't see that he's likely to have a need to go back, to learn from there. Then he asks Arthur what the plan is, what he should do when he comes here. And Arthur says, just explore. The Lady of the Lake knows all, communicates all. And the Lady of the Lake isn't just in this lake. She's in and a part of every body of water. She's in the water, in the plant. She's in the water in the sky. Her awareness is within every single drop of water. And she knows you and she knows us. And if you need our help or we need yours, she'll connect us and we'll be together and she can transport you from one body of water to another, almost teleporting you there rapidly. And everything you need to make your discoveries is here in this cabin. And Merlin then moves his hands together and pulls them apart. And in one hand is a puzzle box made of deep, dark brown wood. And Merlin says, just look at that puzzle box. And when you've got time and you're here, just work on that puzzle. Solve that puzzle box. Open that puzzle box. And all the answers you seek will be inside that box. That you may do the same thing day after day for a while. But what you're doing the same every day, eventually you'll realise what that is, and you'll stop doing it, and the right answer will be like an aha moment, where you'll suddenly just know what to do. And you'll do something different. And that recurrence will stop. And Gareth thanks Arthur and Merlin. And they leave. And Gareth heads to bed. And in bed drifts and floats. So peacefully, so comfortably asleep. And then finds that they're in bed in their normal world, drifting and floating deeper and deeper asleep, approaching the knowledge that when they wake in the morning, they'll feel so refreshed, so revitalized, so full of energy, ready to make a change. Because it'll be a new day for a change. And that knowledge, that wisdom, that connection with this new location where they know when they want to go there, that is where they go in their mind, instinctively and automatically when the time is right. As they drift and float so deeply, so profoundly asleep.